Welcome to the Empire Builders Podcast, teaching business owners the not-so-secret techniques that took famous businesses from mom and pop to major brands. Stephen Semple is a marketing consultant, story collector, and storyteller. I'm Stephen's sidekick and business partner, Dave Young. Before we get into today's episode, a word from our sponsor, which is, well, it's us. But we're highlighting ads we've written and produced for our clients. So here's one of those. Why can't I ever find my people? You can now when you boop. 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 And you'll beep your crew nationwide with Peak Push to Talk. Booping is back. A boop and you're instantly talking to your crew. It's Peak Push to Talk. No more texting. No more it was on silent. No more never returned calls. Nope. Just boop. Boop. Push to Talk from PeakPTT.com. Boop. Steve Semple, my understanding is that we're we're, we're going to take a little departure again this time, right? We're I, I guess it's an empire. I guess it's it's empire building. But you know, it, it, you wanted it, it, to talk about a different kind of empire. This is not a retail empire. It's not a retail empire. There's not a business empire, but it's still interesting. So we're going to talk, and, and and I have to start off with a caveat here because a lot of people love this guy, a lot of people hate this guy. I hate this guy, but I still think he's worth studying because the impact he's had. And that's Donald J. Trump. There you go. Because let's face it, there has not been another politician in our lifetime that has had the impact and the attention worldwide politically, or who has the degree of, and granted, it's not the majority of the American population, but it's certainly a a significant portion of the population who are unbelievably loyal to him. And Mm -hmm. whether, whether you think He's truthful, or whether you think he's a liar, whether you love him or you hate him, doesn't matter. We need to study it. I, I need to put it out there. This is not coming from a place of I love Trump. This is not an admiration episode. This is a this is a let's let's deconstruct it. Figure out are there some things that he did that helped build this personal brand? I guess that's one way. You know, I mean, I don't even I don't even know that I, I would. Let's just call it raving. Fan. Like, like, let's call like, it. Raving. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even think of his business empire as an empire that we would ever talk about, right? No. Not no. absent his name, right? But the point is, he's had a communication strategy that we're going to decode that has created raving fans and mass loyalty on a huge basis, and that is worth understanding. All right, you got my attention. Okay, so there's basically. Seven things, if you take a look at there's seven things that he has done unbelievably well to make all of this, make all of this happen. So the first one is, and I'm going to put them in marketing terms, and then we'll look at what he's actually done. So the first one in marketing terms, and many of them are things that we talk to customers about for years, which is speak to the customer in the language of the customer. We're always talking about when you're creating ads, don't use ad speak. If the customer has this weird way of referring to things, use that. Use that. Use that. Now, in the case of Donald Trump, in the political world, it would be, don't sound like a politician. Mm-hmm. Well, Trump doesn't sound like a politician when he's talking. He really doesn't. When, when he speaks, it really does feel like he's speaking to you one-on-one. It feels like it's that type of thing you could be sitting across the table having a coffee with him. He defends a lot of it by saying it's just locker room talk. That's exactly That's exactly what it feels like, right? It doesn't, exactly. doesn't make it necessarily right, but it's... That's exact. That's an accurate description. Speaking to the customer in the language of the customer, right? So that's the first thing he does. The second thing he does is he makes the message very emotional. And again, okay. we've often talked about how emotion has all of these powerful connections to it. You know, we like to use positive emotions in our advertising, and he uses very heavy negative emotions, but it's still emotions. Mm-hmm. So he speaks to the customer in the language of the customer using powerful emotions to build those connections. So those are the first two things he does. Okay. The third thing he does is he speaks to the customer about what matters to the customer. So he speaks to his base about what's important to his base. When he's in Virginia, he talks about coal mines. When he's in Arizona, he talks about illegal Mexican immigrants. But he speaks to them about what matters to them. So he does it emotionally and in their language. Here's the fourth thing he does. Those other three are easy. Here's where he's the master at, repetition. Oh, man, the dude owns repetition over and over. Yeah. And slam my head against a brick wall over again. He controls the dialogue. The media is always talking about him. 
the public is always talking about him. He's always, always, always being talked about. That is repetition. And he, well, repetition is the key to connection and the key to memorability. Uh, repetition and just the guy owned the news cycle, right? Owned, but not just the news cycle, also day-to-day conversations. And look, there's also been a bunch of studies that repetition leads to actually leads to trust, oddly enough. But but the, but the point is repetition he owned, owned it, owned it, owned it. Now, the other thing he did was also share a voice. Now, repetition is how often it's been spoken about. Share a voice is how far it's been talked about. Gotcha. And he was talked about relentlessly everywhere. The press, Twitter, the water cooler, owned it. Owned repetition. You couldn't hide from him. Right? You could not hide from him. So these are things that, that we often talk about in marketing. You know, speak to the customer in the language of the customer. Make your messages emotional. Talk to them about what's important to them. Lots of repetition. Lots of share of voice. Be heard far more than others. But here's an interesting one that he did that, that is the, the real unusual secret sauce trick. And that is unusual descriptions also have a lot of power. Okay. Give me an example. My doctors tell me that my medical exam was beautiful. They've beautiful. never seen such beautiful results. It was so brilliantly beautiful that they're sharing it with everyone. That's a quote. I did not make that up. Yeah. And we all remember that quote, right? Think about of all the stuff he said, we remember yeah. the whole thing of my medical exam was a beautiful result. And, and nobody's ever said that about their own medical exam. No one ever said that about any medical exam. No. Well, it, even even the, the, whole, the whole issue that of his... I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. There's nothing about a colonoscopy. That's beautiful. <laughs> Fair enough. But, but even even things like like um, the defense of of the phone call in his for his first impeachment was was that it was a perfect call. It was the perfect call. It was a perfect. Call. When have you ever had a perfect phone call? Never. Wow. What? You would never describe it that way. You're right. 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 But over and over, he would use these unusual descriptions, and unusual yeah. descriptions have been have been proven to have this power. What always drives me crazy when we talk about advertisers and we'll put in this phraseology that's a little off. Uh-huh. Go, oh, geez, you know, no one, would, no, no, that 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 feels awkward. We've got to change it. It's like no, unusual descriptions have power. Absolutely, the the one that's is probably the most glaring. And it was repeated so often, but I don't think it was in the vernacular until he came up and started running, was fake news. Fake news, he invented right. that. Journalists have always, always, I mean, I have a journalist journalism degree. I've got a background in it. And and you're crazy if you think journalists have, if there's ever been a period where there was absolute objectivity in reporting. Every journalist and every newspaper, every every source of news has some kind of a point of view. Right. But to classify them all as fake, that was a that was a step of uh, that was that was owning that description. It was owning the description. So, yeah. so so he did these things in terms of how he how he spoke, how he delivered the message, packaged it in emotion, made sure there was tons of repetition, owned the cycle dominated share of voice, everyone was talking about it, and put in these unusual descriptions. But he had one last seventh element that he did that also brought a lot of power. Stay tuned. We're going to wrap up this story and tell you how to apply this lesson to your business right after this. Brought to you by the Least Full of Shit Marketers Association of America. Yes, that's a low bar, but we clear it mightily. We're also the largest pay-per-performance branding group in North America, and that part's for reals. If you're looking for advertising advice geared towards local owner-operated companies, this is your podcast. And now you can pick the brains of these advertising geniuses over lunch without having to pay for lunch or even leave your office. We're talking 90 minutes of straight answers to all your burning questions about lead generation, customer acquisition, mass media branding, how to get off the paper crack treadmill, anything you want. And the only coin required is candor. Because we can't give no bullshit advice without basing it off no BS data on your company, competitive landscape, operations, and all that jazz. We send you a pre-Zoom questionnaire. You fill it out candidly and boom. Bob's your uncle, you're in like Flynn, and we'll be frank as fuck in giving you the straight scoop on all the advertising and business growth questions you always wanted to know, but were too afraid to ask. You'll also get our no pitching and no bitching guarantee. No pitching means we won't pitch you or try to sell you in any way. If you want more after 90 minutes, you'll have to ask. And no bitching means if you don't think the meeting was worth your 90 minutes, 
we'll send you a hundred bucks. Consider it us picking up the tab for lunch and putting our money where our mouth is. Sound like a not so full of shit offer? Well, that is what we're known for. Take us up on it at empirebuildersprogram.com. Let's pick up our story where we left off and trust me, you haven't missed a thing. But he had one last seventh element that he okay. did that also brought a lot of power. And if you want to read more about this idea, you can read um, not about Trump, but this idea I'm going to share in the book Flipnosis by Keith Dutton. Flipnosis. And flipnosis. So Flipnosis, I'll come back about what Flipnosis is about. It's kind of an interesting book, but it's this whole idea of delivering with absolute confidence. Okay. And if you think about sales, sales at its core is the transference of confidence. Sure. Marketing is creating of interest. Sales is the transference of confidence. And, and he delivered it with complete, utter confidence. I've talked to everyone. They all agree. Mm-hmm. And did it with complete, like to the stage where you go, is he, does he really believe it? Or is he complete, utter confidence? So the seven things to decode it, and we'll come back to flipnosis in a second. So the seven elements that we can learn from Trump is speak to the customer in language of the customer. No ad speak. Talk to them the way they talk. Make it feel like you're sitting across the kitchen table from them. Make your message emotional. Speak to them about what matters to them. It's not about your goddamn features and benefits of crap. Talk about what's important to them. Make sure your advertising has repetition. Mm-hmm. This whole ad words, click one and done stuff doesn't work. Make sure that there's repetition. Share a voice. Try to be louder than your competition. If you can, buy as much share of voice as you can. Be talked about as much as you can. You know, P.T. Barnum once said, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? Use unusual descriptions. When your ad writer brings you something that sounds unusual, don't go, oh, gee, that sounds unusual. We should take that out. No. Yeah. Power in unusual descriptions and deliver things with complete confidence don't you and here's what i mean by that don't use weaselly words you know we usually uh give guarantee like i mean there's so many weaselly words out there you know that that just drive me nuts and weaselly words drop confidence right you're gonna, you're gonna give um, no questions asked money back guarantee it's a no questions asked money back guarantee not you know <laughs> Most people get the money back guarantee. Like, stop with all of that. Um, and, and 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 the reason why I bring up the book Flipnosis, Flipnosis is kind of interesting because what what Keith Dutton actually studied was con men. Con men. Con men. Okay. Yeah. 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 And he basically studied them and he tore it apart and he said, "Here's what all these guys have done to run these cons. And this is how they sucked people in." It's a fascinating book to read. The lesson is in Flipnosis is this delivering with complete confidence. And but there's he also a lot of these other things you'll see. But the lesson is. These are the seven ways in which you will make people love you. Yeah. As I think about this right now, there's there's an eighth one. Choose who to lose. He mm-hmm. was okay with people hating him. And what Absolutely. we know is what we know is great advertising. Great advertising brings a lot of love. Great advertising also brings haters. He understood that. He knew it. He had no problem with it. And good for him on that, Mark. I, I, th- I think the thing that you could also take away from this is all of these all of these techniques can be used for good. Yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. You don't have to be a con man. No. No, these are just – we're just doing a distilling here of the techniques. Whether you believe that he's the greatest president ever was or you believe he's a con man, what I'm saying is – the facts become irrelevant. You do these seven techniques, the facts become irrelevant. Now you yeah. could use it for good and make the world a better place, or you could use it for bad. Choice is yours. Our job here as marketers is to teach you how to build an empire. If you want to build an empire, you want raving fans. This is how you get raving fans. Yeah. Amen. If you want to build an evil empire, there are other... Uh, uh, we still use the same seven techniques. You can <laughs> still use the same seven things. Don't ask me to help. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what you're saying. <laughs> Looking forward to the next empire building story from you, Steve. Well, empire, you know, beard going there. <laughs> the empire of evil. Don't be that guy. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Please share us, subscribe on your favorite podcast app, and leave us a big, fat, juicy five-star rating and review at Apple Podcasts. And if you'd like to schedule your own 90-minute Empire Building session, you can do it at empirebuildingprogram.com. Empire Building Program.